changes to menstrual flow is one of the commonest symptoms that women experience from 40s onwards, but particularly as they reach the late perimenopause. The changes can be one of two things. They can either be increased flow and increased frequency or reduced frequency of periods. So in simple terms, the periods can either get much closer together or can start to space out. Women can also experience intermenstrual bleeding, which is the technical term for spotting in between periods. And finally, they may also find that their periods become not only heavier, but more painful. The key trigger to the changes is uh, changes in ovulation. That results in what we call disordered hormonal flux during the cycle. So instead of having a, a regular cyclical swing of estrogen and progesterone each month, which most women have if they have a 28-day cycle, the hormone release can become very disordered, almost random. And that then leads to effectively random shedding of the lining without any predictable pattern. Many women are under the misapprehension that as they lead up to the menopause, their peers will actually get much lighter, they'll have less to worry about, but sadly the reverse is true, uh, and in fact their periods generally get heavier, closer together, uh, and much more troublesome. Management of uh, troublesome periods in the perimenopause and menopause is a complex area. It's multifactorial and it will depend on the woman's own individual circumstances, her age, her contraceptive needs, her fertility, her family history, and obviously whether or not you suspect there is any other underlying pathology. Most problems are undoubtedly due to hormonal changes, as we've discussed, but some women may have an underlying problem, for example, with fibroids, with polyps, with an inflammation or infection in the womb lining. So it's important that that group of women have appropriate investigations to exclude problems that need separate treatment. Management of heavy menstrual periods around the time of the menopause divides into three separate categories. The simplest one is non-hormonal, then we have hormonal techniques, and then we have surgical techniques. Non-hormonal treatments are those which women may have already been given by their GP or their practice nurse before seeing a specialist like myself. These would include drugs such as non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, drugs such as ibuprofen, which can help with blood loss and pain during a period. There are other drugs within this category, including tranexamic acid, which is a non-hormonal drug which minimises clotting and can obviously help with heavy, difficult periods. Hormonal methods of treatment are slightly more complex and they include the pill, both combined and mini pill, the Mirena IUS, which is a progesterone containing coil, which many women may have used for contraception previously, but has a separate license for heavy periods, and finally HRT. Many patients are surprised that HRT is being offered to control heavy periods, but it can actually be one of the most effective means of treating perimenopausal and menopausal women, particularly if they have other symptoms as well as troublesome periods. Surgical options are available for women who have not responded to the first two categories of treatment. So they're not for everybody, but some women do have genuinely troublesome periods that are impacting quality of life and they need additional treatment. The simplest form of surgical management nowadays is a procedure called an endometrial ablation. And that means that the lining or endometrium of the womb is stripped or ablated, usually by some form of heat. That can be enormously effective and 90% of women who have that sort of procedure may find that they either have no periods or the periods are much lighter and more manageable. So it's certainly one of the first line treatments to consider in this category. For those women who do not respond to the other forms of treatment that I've outlined, the final option may be to consider a hysterectomy. Fortunately, these are hardly ever done nowadays except for cancer or precancerous lesions. And the number of women who undergo a hysterectomy is far less nowadays than it was 10 or 20 years ago. But for those women who have a genuine problem, it's still a very effective form of treatment. The first port of call for women should be the GP. Most GPs uh, are quite knowledgeable in this area, even those who don't have any particular expertise as far as menopause is concerned, but they usually have a good grounding in managing difficult periods. So GPs are best placed to give basic advice and advise on any further um, investigations needed. 
but if a further referral onwards is, is needed, that would be to a specialist like myself, who's a gynaecologist, who's specifically trained in further management. There are things that patients can do to help themselves if they wish to avoid any medical intervention. The first thing that I would advise patients to do is to look at the sort of sanitary protection that they're using and consider using an organic brand rather than one of the standard brands available. Organic products are generally made from bleach-free organic cotton, which doesn't use dioxins and other chemicals in the processing. And there is quite interesting anecdotal evidence, including from my own patients, that this does help heavy, painful periods. We don't fully understand why that should be, uh, and I would be the first to say that we do need more scientific research and, and more randomised work, if possible, looking into it. But it's certainly a fascinating area of interest. The other issue that women should consider is weight control, general fitness levels and general health. It's recognised that women who have a higher BMI are more likely to have heavier periods because of the additional oestrogen production in the fat cells in the adipose tissue. So if women do struggle with periods in the perimenopause, it's vital that they keep their weight within the normal BMI range.